well, speaking of actors, I recently interviewed Leon. Leon, yeah, okay. Very dope interview. I was a big fan. That's good. Um, Five Heartbeats was one of my favorite movies, mm. really, period. Mm. Just a brilliant piece of a, a cinema. And, you know, with, you know, a typical Vlad TV interview, if you have some connection to Tupac, I'm going to talk about it. So <laughs> okay. we talked about how uh, they did Above the Rim together, mm. right? And they talked about, you know, how on set uh, Tupac was perfect, knew his lines, showed up on time, everything else like that. But once he was offset, it was just total chaos. Mm. Uh, getting into fights with people, uh, giving blunts to the audience members. And then there was the Atlanta shooting that happened yeah. right around, like literally during the shooting mm -hmm. you know, of the film. He shot two uh, white cops in Atlanta. Right. And then had to go through, you know, they said that they had to just, you know, they were, okay, we're not shooting that scene today because <laughs> Tupac is locked up and, right, you know, right. and so forth. But what he told me was very interesting uh, at the end uh, of their relationship. And that is Leon sat right behind Tupac at the Tyson Selden fight, mm. which was, you know, which yeah, right. shortly after Tupac got killed, mm -hmm. right, in Las Vegas. And when I asked him how Tupac was and what ended up being some of his last moments uh, on earth, I said, How was he at the fight? He told me something very interesting. He said the entire fight, Tupac was screaming because you know him and you know Pac and, and uh, Mike Tyson were close. Mm -hmm. He said the whole time Pac was screaming at the at the at the ref, jumping up and down, acting unruly. He said it was even to the point where the ref I think had to tell Pac to calm down because yeah. he was he was basically interfering with the fight. Mm -hmm. And he even talked about how Pac kind of carried that same energy into the lobby where he ended up, you know, attacking Orlando, right. Orlando Anderson. You were actually sitting next to him at the Mike Tyson fight at the MGM mm -hmm. in 1996. Yeah, he was sitting just a uh, row behind me. Okay, so you, you reached back to him and, and talked to him? And oh, so yeah, forth? no, yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. You know, say what's up and, you know, whatever. Yeah, of course, yeah. What was the vibe like in terms of him, like, you know, because he obviously did not know what was about to happen. Um, you know, be honest with you, man, he was <laughs> he was beyond rambunctious. I mean, he was yelling at the at the referee to the point where the referee could hear him. He was calling the other guy a bum. It was like it was, he was going off. I mean, he had a lot of energy that night, and so I guess whatever happened spilled out into the lobby, and um, and then from there, you know, I remember we were all out. And we got the news, you know, that was rough. And it just kind of makes you think, you know, look, I go to fight parties at your house. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anyone in that room who's a man doesn't feel somewhat pumped up from watching these two men beat each other. And, you know, you you put yourself into, you know, you kind of, you know, as a man, you project yourself to a certain degree into these guys who are fighting each other, and you kind of feel like that's you, a little bit, mm -hmm. and you get hyped up and pumped up, and it just kind of got me thinking of like, if Pac had just been chilling in his room and he went downstairs and saw Orlando, after not seeing Tyson fight and get all riled up and full of testosterone, if none of that would have happened. Yeah, you know, it's just like, like I say, my. My assessment of who he was, uh, I feel like I, I've gotten a glimpse at something that other people who knew him, they, they all agree with me. And, and the people that that were there all agree as well. Uh, but it's something intoxicating about being this character and, you know, kind of living on id, you know, like there's the id, the ego, and mm -hmm. but just so... I know what that intoxication is from acting and being, you know, kind of in, inhabiting a character. I mean, I think to some degree, imagine, I can imagine Drake going crazy into another <laughs> direction. I mean, he can, he can go from, you know, one thing to, I mean, not maybe total gangster, but if you're looking at somebody that says, okay, well, there's this side of me, but then I can 
drift into this side to some degree. Mm -hmm. Imagine him just keep going with that and it meaning so much that he just in, 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 encompasses the street persona like 24-7, or not, or not 24-7, but around that group. And somebody who he really isn't, but he can just kind of go off that way. Like when yeah. you're acting, when you're that that there's a there's a um there is a concept when you are acting and you're playing a character, like if I'm playing Black Dynamite, I'm playing a character mm -hmm. that it's like it's fun to just go off and be somebody else right. for a minute. Right? Yeah. Like I, I remember in my interview with Leon, because he played uh Lil Richard. Yeah. Right? In the, in the biopic. Yeah. And at one point, Little Richard was on set, mm -hmm. and he talked about how he got Little Richard kicked off set because he said there cannot be two Little Richards in this room right now. <laughs> I am Little Richard right now. I can't be looking at the other Little Richard. <laughs> right, right. Get him the hell up out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, Little Richard was still alive uh, during the time that you were filming this, and I guess at one point, Little Richard was on set while you're working, and you actually had to kick little Richard off because you said there could only be one little Richard at a time. Yeah, I mean, he was in my line of sight, you know, when I was doing a scene, when I was about to do a scene, I'm like, I can't do that, you know? I can't be little Richard and little Richard be there. I mean, there's only one little Richard on set. So he understood, he was cool. He knew my dedication to it, so, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's acting for you. But bro, there's an intoxication with that. Yeah. You know, in you know, being a character, Andrew Silver, Andrew Silverstein, mm -hmm. Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah, that was one of the characters that he had. He used to do impressions like crazy. That character stuck, stuck, and yep. kind of became him. <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah. Uh, but it there's there's so many cases of this. If you pay attention, you you could play a, a role, and that. Alter ego is far more interesting than who you normally are.